hi guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here thank you for tuning in and to my returning subscribers thank you for always coming back to my channel in my last video i posted the pattern drafting for this dress so this video will be the sewing process the step-by-step -step sewing process i made the sewing process step by step so that a beginner can easily understand what i am doing if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get notified anytime i upload a new video now let's jump right into the sewing of this beautiful dress These are my back patterns and I have transferred to fabric. I'll set the down part aside and focus on the upper part first. The first thing you need to do is to add the necessary allowance to the pattern and make sure that your fabric is in a fold when you are pinning your pattern to the fabric because you need two pieces for the back. I added 1.5 inches to the side, half inch at the top and half inch at the bottom. The dart line you have on the pattern, you need to notch it on the fabric so that you can easily sew your darts. Notch your darts on the fabric and take note of the length of the darts you'll be taking in. Now I'll separate the pattern from the fabric so that we can see what we have. You can also notch your zip allowance on the fabric. For the lower part of the back pattern, I added 1.5 inches to the side, 1.5 inches at the bottom and half inch at the top. It is important to add all the necessary allowance. Now I'm notching my zip allowance there and you will notice that I close the dots on the pattern. That is because I don't want to sew the dots on the fabric. You can decide to sew the dots on the fabric, it is totally optional if you want a dart to show on your skirt parts it is totally optional you can close the dots on the pattern or taking the dots on the fabric these are my front pieces here and i have also transferred to fabric now for the upper part of the front i have added the necessary allowance 1.5 inches to the side half inch at the bottom and half inch at the top the next step is to transfer all the that you have on the pattern to the fabric. The first thing I did here is to put a pin on the bust point. You need to identify where the bust point is, exactly where the bust point is. It is important to identify it. Then the next step is to notch the darts on the fabric. I've notched the darts here and for the bust darts also, I will notch the bust darts on the fabric. I'll take out the pattern here so that we can see what we have. Here I'm using the chalk to mark the bust point and I'll mark the bust point on the other side of the fabric also. Then I'll open the fabric so that we can see the full bodies. Now on that bust point, while taking the dots, you need to go out by one inch you need to leave a space of one inch before the bust starts also for the waist that you need to leave a space of one inch from the bust point before taking the darts same thing you are going to do on the other side while taking the waist that leave a space of one inch before the bust point that is where the dart will stop and for the bust that leave a space of one inch before the bust points, that is where the darts will stop. This is the lower part of the front and just like I did with the other patterns, I had that 1.5 inches to the side, half inch at the top and 1.5 inches at the bottom. And I also closed the darts on the pattern. Now this is what we have for the front piece. These are my back pieces, the upper part, after taking in the darts, I have ironed it properly. It is important to iron after every step of sewing. So now the next thing I'm going to do now is to close the zip allowance on the upper part. I won't close it entirely. From the neckline, I marked 2 inches. So I'll stitch from the top up till I get to the 2 inches point. What I'm doing here is simply taking out the zip allowance away from the neckline. 
I have cut out a facing for these back pieces. I added interfacing to the facing. I would recommend that you also add interfacing to your facing so that it can give the fabric more stability. To cut out the facing is very simple. Just trace out what you have on the neckline and use your desired length to cut it out. Like I explained earlier that I will close the zip allowance on the neckline of the back pieces. I will also do the same thing to the facing. I will close the zip allowance on my facing. So I will go ahead and mark the 1.5 inches for the zip allowance on the facing and stitch. This is the upper part of the front of the dress and I have taken in the dart here. So I was trying to show you guys the space in between the bust dart and the waist dart here but I, I didn't know that the camera did not capture that part. But like I explained earlier to you guys, leave a space of 1 inch before the bust point before taking in both the bust dart and the waist dart. I have also cut out facing for the front piece. To cut out the facing is very simple, just trace out what you have on the neckline of the front piece and use your desired length to cut it out. It is very simple and I also added an interfacing, a fusible interfacing to my facing. The lower part of the front of the dress has pleats in front. So the first step is to determine where you want the pleat to fall on. Now on this part, I am marking 9 inches and on the other side, I am marking 4.5 inches. If you notice from the picture, the pleat is going in a slant form to the other side. I came back to mark 10 inches and on the other side, I marked 5 inches. And I will connect both sides together with my chalk. I cut out this piece of fabric so that we can use it to make the pleats on the skirt and I folded the edge of the fabric all around the edge except the part that I'll be stitching to the skirt I did not fold that part. So the length of this fabric is 26 inches while the width is around 43 inches. This is the lower part of the dress, the front part now. The first thing I'm going to do is to pin the fabric to the top of the skirt Pin it all the way but leave a space of about 2 inches before the other edge of the skirt. I want the size of my pleats to be 2 inches, that is why I'm marking 2 inches here from the top of this piece of fabric all the way to the bottom. After marking the 2 inches, I will notch the points. Now that I am done notching, I will start pleating. Please make sure that your pleat is facing the upper part. Make sure that your pleat is facing up. I'll continue pleating till I get to the end of the fabric. I am done making the pleats here and the next step is to go over to the sewing machine and secure the pleats down with a stitch. These are my back pieces. This was after I stitched the 2 inches point on the back and also after I stitched the facing together. And this is what we have. The next step is to join the front and the back piece together on the shoulder but before I do that, I'll set the back aside and bring in the front piece. We are going to join this part of the front with half inch. I'll do the same thing on the front facing. I'll join with half inch and I'll bring it back and show you. This is after I was done joining and I pressed the same flat. Please make sure to press every step of the sewing process. And this is the main front piece here. I also pressed it properly. Now I'll bring in the back piece so that we can join it on the shoulder. 
you are going to match the part where you have the joining on the front piece you are going to match it to where you have the joining on the back piece match it together and secure with a pin take the shoulder point of both the front and the back and also secure it together with a pin after securing it together on both sides, I'll go over to the sewing machine and stitch with half inch seam allowance. I'll do the same thing to the facing of both the front and the back. Just like we did with the main pieces, match the center point on both the front and the back together. Secure it with a pin and take the shoulders together and also secure it with a pin and go ahead and stitch with half inch seam allowance. I'll go over to the sewing machine now and do that and I'll bring it back and show you. This is after I was done stitching and this is what we have. Now the next step is to notch all the points you stitch together notch close to the seam please don't cut the seam while notching just notch close to the seam this helps the collar to relax properly on the neckline i'll set this aside and i'll also notch the facing Now, the next step is to attach the facing to the main piece. I'll place the facing on the main piece, right side facing each other, and I'll secure the neckline with a pin. Secure around the neckline with pins, and make sure that you match all the important joinings on both the fabric, the main fabric, and also on the facing. Match the important points together, and go ahead and secure around the neckline with pins. This will make it very easy to stitch when you get to the sewing machine. This is after I was done stitching around the neckline and I also top stitched on the facing. So after stitching around the neckline, please top stitch on the facing and also use a hemming gum while pressing the neckline. The next step is to attach the lower part of the back to the upper part. I'll just place the upper part on the lower part, right side facing each other and I'll go ahead and stitch with half inch seam allowance. Remember to add interfacing to the zip area of the back piece. It is important to add interfacing so that by the time you're done fixing the zip, there won't be any fold at the back. Here, yeah, I'm pinning the upper part to the lower part. I'm just securing it down with a pin and I'll go over to the sewing machine and stitch with half inch seam allowance. I am done joining the back piece here and the next step is to join the lower part of the front to the upper part. To join the lower part of the front to the upper part, place the lower part on the upper part, right side facing each other and secure it with a pin. This is after I was done joining and you can see this side I am showing you that I did not stitch on it so you have to make sure that the ends of the of the fabric that you pleated are open you didn't stitch it together on the waist joining the next step now is to go ahead and join the sides together so whatever allowance you left on the side go ahead and use it to join the sides together one tip guys don't join the both sides together now this part that has the open ends of the pleat is the part you are going to join first and leave the other side here I have joined one side just like I told you earlier. The side that has the open end of the pleat is the part I joined first. And the reason why I said you shouldn't join the both sides together is for you to be able to top stitch on the open ends of the pleats. So after joining the sides together, I top stitched on the open ends of the pleats. 
Don't forget to iron your pleats before top stitching on the open ends of the plates. So now that we are done with that part, I'll go ahead now and join the other side together. I am done joining now and this is what we have, this is what our dress is looking like now. Now for the pleats, you can take your needle and thread and tack in between the pleats just to secure the pleats with the dress. Don't make the tacking visible on the pleats, just tack in between the pleats. The next step is to fix the zip to the back of the dress. I'll go over and do that now and I'll bring it back. For the sleeve part, I'll go with a short sleeve, I don't want a long sleeve. So you can go in with any sleeve of your choice and i have my basic sleeve pattern here if you don't know how to draft a basic sleeve pattern i'll put the link in the description box so that you can watch the video i made on how to draft a basic sleeve pattern now i have transferred my pattern to fabric and the length of this sleeve is 10 inches i'll separate the pattern from the sleeve now so that we can see what we have i have the two sleeves cut out here and what I'll do is just to fold the edge of the sleeve twice and join the sides together. Yeah, I'm done fixing the zip to the back of the dress. And the last step for this dress is to fix in the sleeves. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like button leave a comment and subscribe to my channel please turn on your notification bell so you'll get notified anytime i upload a new video if you have a suggestion on the kind of video you want to see on my channel please send a dm to me on instagram at stitched by st and i'll see you in my next one bye